So today we're going to talk about a common brachytherapy procedure and how physicists should be involved and how you would handle this. So today let's talk about simply a tandem and ovoid treatment. So how is this simulated in CT? How is the applicator chosen? Which isotopes are used and why is that the case? What is a common dose fractionation? What type of loading would you try for an LDR treatment and describe the optimization? How do you evaluate a plan if you're doing a second check? What are some important tolerances? Why would you want to use radioopaque gauze? What is the length of the seed and how far does the disease need to extend before actually considering a interstitial treatment rather than a tandem and ovoid? So, this is for the simulation and applicator. So typically you're going to use a, a 6 cm tandem and the largest ovoids possible. So you want to use the largest ovoids possible because you have fornices that they're going to be put in. And if you get the correct size and they can be as large as possible, that uses inverse square law to reduce the dose to the close structures. It also stretches out the skin folds in the fornices to ensure that they get completely treated. And also during simulation, you may want to pack gauze into that space. And that ensures that things don't move and that everything is situated and placed where you want it. You typically are going to use a two CM slices or two, sorry, millimeter slices and a possible colpoplast to reduce the dose. And that's just, again, the rounded ovoid. So what isotopes are used and why? So typically we use a radium-192 if we're using HDR and the advantages to this are that it's a 73 half-life. There is a 380 KEV. So they're far enough to treat what we want, but it's, they're not gonna penetrate so far that's dangerous for the patient. And most importantly, it has a high a specific activity. So we can have a very small source and it still be very strong. The exposure rate constant is 4.26 R per cm squared millicurie hour. You never know when the examiner may just ask you, oh, tell us characteristics about iridium. So you need to have those on top of your head. So what type of loading would you try and describe the, the optimization? How do you do those? So a uh, first thing, or I guess I think I jumped, I'm sorry, dose fractionation. Typically, again, this is going to depend on your clinic and know what your clinic does. My clinic, we do 600 by five fractions. So that is a 30 gray total treatment. And then now let's talk about loading. So in our clinic, we load the tandem to the very tip. At the bottom of the tandem, it's not loaded very much. So let's talk about, so we load to the very top of the the tandem. We don't load very much down here near the ovoids because we do have those and they are going to be providing dose. So you just don't need it. The Depending on where the PTV is, uh, most physicians actually draw the PTV and more likely you're probably going to put the dose and the time at the tip quite a bit, a decent amount of time. The middle of the tandem probably averages around eight to 10 seconds. Obviously, this depends on PTV and depends on how much other critical structures are surrounding, but the ovoids are weighted and we use typically geometric optimization on this as well. So how would you evaluate this plan? So the first thing, if you're doing a second check, you want to look at the coverage of the PTV. You also want to look at the regions of interest. You want to look at uh, whether it may be the bladder the bowel, all of the other surrounding organs, the rectum, you want to use a equivalent dose sheet because typically these TNO treatments, they are going to get external beam, either a boost or they've had external beam and they're getting a tandem and ovoid boost, something like that. And so you want to use an equivalent dose sheet to see that with this treatment you are giving and then an estimated external beam, are you giving too much dose to those organs? So you don't want a massive hot spot or cold spot, and, but you do want the PTV covered. 
So from all three views, the plan should look reasonable. Don't look at just the coronal or the axial. You got to look at all three views. In the 3D view, one thing I like, most of these have a 3D view that can show that they show the catheters and how they are reconstructed. So you need to ensure that they are digitized and reconstructed while the catheter, the applicator, and the ovoids. Otherwise, what you're seeing on the treatment planning system and what is actually going to happen in reality are not going to match. And a when looking, obviously, you need to look at PTV contour. Does it look reasonable? Is it being covered? And then a DVH. You really want to analyze those DVHs as well. So some important tolerances which go into this evaluate is 2cc of the bladder. I get a lot of these from the uh, ABS, the American Brinky Therapy Society. So you want that less than 90 gray. The same thing, 2cc of rectum, you want less than 75 gray. So bladder is more radio resistant, so we can take a bit more dose than the rectum can. So definitely look up ABS guidelines, look up Timmerman. And if you choose the A and B points, the A points for your prescription needs to go to 60 gray. If, again, you, you're using... Um, I guess it depends on what, what exactly you are using for your, your fractionation. But a lot of places I've seen, although they are contouring PTVs now, they still want to record what points A and B look like and what doses they're getting. So be sure you review that. That's for another video. So now radiopaque gauze, I kind of already mentioned, it pushes the organs away. It keeps those applicators in place. So it helps with inverse square law and ensures things don't move. Typically, they have barium sulfate in them, so you can actually see the gauze in the CT scan. So what's the length of the seed? Typically, that is four millimeters. And then according to ABS, they say that if the disease is less, I'll put this, or less than 0.5 cm from the tandem, you can use a TNO. Now, if that's not the case, then if it's greater than 0.5 cm, that's supposed to be a greater than sign. If it's greater than 0.5 cm, then you want to do a interstitial. So, and really quickly, I guess, just to cover, so because it seems like maybe it's something that I'm missing in this question. Point A is where uh, essentially that's the Rx point and the point, where can I write it? Right here, point A. Point A is 2 cm up, 2 cm over from the tandem. Then we have, uh, essentially that's a location where the uterine vessels cross the ureter. That's the significance of those. Point B is 2 cm up and two or five, sorry, five cm over. And that's in respect to the pelvis. Because think, like right here in this diagram, the tandem is perfectly placed in the pelvis. However, in reality, that may not be the case. This tandem may kind of go off this way. So the A point would be based on the tandem, and the B point is based on the pelvis. Something very important to remember. The bladder point, you want to put a point on the bladder, and that's going to be on the Foley, and it's going to be the most posterior portion. Essentially, that's where you're going to get the most dose, so you want to be conservative here. And then you also are going to have a rectum point, and that is most anterior. Again, that is where you are going to get the most dose, so be conservative. So that is a good overview of tandem and ovoids. Definitely practice these, practice looking at them. If, you're, if your clinic doesn't use them, really brush up on the technique, the use of them, because I feel like this is a question that very well could be asked in this complete fair game on part three. So if you have any questions, comment below. Thank you for watching and good luck studying.